guys, Miss Nikki Ann, and this is part three to my story about um, my bad experiences for the week and um, bad experience with Dr. Jeffrey Kluger. Um, so upon, um, I left the ER, uh, that was yesterday evening, Wednesday evening, and when I got home, my mom told me that uh, Dr. Jeffrey Kluger's office had contacted um, me, was trying to contact me and got her and um, it didn't go so well <laughs> for Dr. Kluger's office in which she said in no way would she consider basically going back and that she couldn't speak for me but that she was definitely done and so um, I have no plans on calling Dr. Jeffrey Kruger, cardiologist, pot specialist, affiliate, affiliated with Hartford Hospital, back. And again, I did take my files with me, so he has nothing of mine. And I feel very comfortable and comforted by that, by that idea. And so, it was a long night. It's just like the frustration had mounted. and. My colon still wasn't functioning, and um, so this morning, Thursday, um, June 16th, um, my son had a dental appointment, and um, and we had some other um, errands to run, but I knew that I needed to get back home to make the three phone calls that the ER wanted me to make, which was to primary care, neurology, and to my GI. That's where it all begins again. So I called my GI first because I knew that um, they would be expecting to hear from me. And um, she said uh, she would uh, call me back with the appointment, but they were thinking that they would get me in. I think it was something like next, um, next week on Wednesday even though the ER said that I need to see him within the next one or two days but his schedule just didn't permit it. He went to be in the office Friday and Monday and so but that was fine with me you know one o'clock for next Wednesday um, and I said to her um, I'm leaving my primary care and if I could get a referral for that that would be great and um, also um, yeah, it was that, yeah, yeah, so, so wait, so that was it, okay, hung up the phone, moved on to calling neurology, which is at the same hospital, the lady's like, you're looking for, for whom, and I give her the name that was given to me on my paperwork, or my exiting paperwork from the ER, and they're like, I don't know why ER keeps giving patients that number, that, that name, that person no longer works here. I don't know, it doesn't really matter to me. No, I just want to make this appointment because the ER told me to call your office to book this appointment within the next one or two days. And she's like, well, okay, um, I'll have uh, someone, uh, someone will be in contact with you between today and tomorrow. I'm like, okay. And things started to occur to me slowly. Like, I remember having a problem with that hospital getting into one of their, um, to see one of their neurologists. They were putting me like, you know, six months out or whatever. And um, in the end, I got my neurologist, my first neuro neurologist, woohoo! Oh my gosh, <laughs> I got him and that didn't work out. And I wound up in a, with my neurologist out in Boston who specializes in dysautonomia. This is not going well for me, guys. <laughs> okay. And $6,000 later, I will not be going back to her. Plus all the expenses I incurred from traveling back and forth. And I have to stay overnight to go see her because I can't take the long ride. It sets off my tech of car. <sighs> so, needless to say. Um, so, I'm like, okay. I get the phone call back from my GI office. And so my GI is in at the time this morning when I left, I said, let me go by the um, 
the pharmacy to get some enemas because I gotta get the stuff out of my colon and that's how I usually get it out per my um, dysautonomia specialist in Boston and my GI they like for me to use Miralax and Cotcholes Amatiza which is a prescription and then also enemas usually one oil and then two salines but there were no oils so I got four salines and so um uh yeah and so I did those in the meantime waiting yes I did those four enemas back to back barely any of anything came out so I know it must be hardened and stuck in there okay despite taking all that stuff and and so um the lady calls she's like it was, you know hey Nikki how's it going I said well I just took four enemas so that, that, you know, but this is great. I'm talking to the GI's office. So I'm like, this makes sense to have this conversation with them, you know. And she's like, well, this is what we're going to need for you to do. We're going to need for you to call Dr. Dr. Neuro Ophthalmologist. And it's going to be best for you to get a referral from him for, for whom he thinks you should go to over in neurology. Because, Nikki, we don't want you just to get, you know, a fellow or a student or something like that. And I was like, but Dr. Neuro-Ophthalmologist is the one who told me to call Dr. GI. And so that's why I was there yesterday when I had the TIA. And she's like, well, this is going to be the best route because she's like, he's a GI. And, you know, it does colonoscopies, endoscopies, but you need someone in internal medicine. I was like, she's like, you really, really need a good neurologist and you need one now, you know, because I've had so many TIAs recently. And I'm just like, again, I'm saying, but I came, what about my issue? Um, do I still have the appointment for next week? She's like, no, nope, he doesn't want to do anything until you've seen a neurologist. But, and I said to her, well, good thing I already have an appointment with him and I do. Um, for July 12th she's like okay so that's good and by then you have seen but I was like but what about the issue that doctor neuro ophthalmologist wanted me to bring up about you know the IV fluids that my rheumatologist is feeling funny about booking while she's on maternity leave Nikki again that's like internal medicine really I just got out and she's a nice lady I just I realized that I was trapped in medical hell in in need of health reform hell and that saying nothing I would say was going to fix the fact that I just saw a doctor neuro ophthalmologist on Monday he told me to go see Dr. GI and I did and then Dr. GI tells me to go see Dr. Neuro ophthalmologist so I just wanted to be sure I covered all bases and I called Dr. Neuro ophthalmologist um, assistant like I was told to do by the GI nurse and didn't get anyone the front desk wasn't even picking up and that's a busy office I mean there are a lot of people there it's not as if there's one person and so I left a message um, haven't heard back it's four o'clock now and um, so then I called my rheumatologist and my psychiatrist who are the only two people who throughout all of this time since 2008 the only two people who I get any results from and I left a message with my psychiatrist but then I know today's Thursday and she's really busy up until maybe like four she'll probably call me and she'll call you seven days a week okay she is awesome so she'll call me in a minute probably and I spoke to her while I was in the ER and she was trying to you know make sure that I was going about things in a very skillful manner when it comes to the healthcare system because it'll drive you not to really have to have some support <laughs> and so but I call my rheumatologist assistant rheumatologist is not in today she said and I gave her the whole rundown she's like but what happened with the specialist I'm like I gave her that story gave her the ER story told her about how fast they ran the IV fluids she's like but you have your appointment for tomorrow still I'm like yeah but I'm thinking to myself what after that next week I'm gonna need the same thing and also can we address the fact that with my gastroparesis um, my colon is no longer working I called my GI he's the colon guy 
and he's pushing me off of neurology. You know, I said, I told her, I said, I am in healthcare hell and I'm going around a circle and as a patient, I'm not getting any results because I'm the patient. Like I'm gonna call up a doctor's office. You need to put me on right now because I spoke with Dr. Such and Such and Dr. Such and Such. They don't care who I spoke with. I'm just Jane Doe, some patient looking to get in. Because I did call neurology. They haven't called me back and I, the enemas didn't work. And I told her that. And so here I am, you know, swallowing, skinny bad, stuck with all these things. And then my son's got stuff going on, you know, he now needs two um, visits back to the dentist for he chipped the whole tooth in half in the back or fractured it and needs to some laughing gas and stuff to get that fixed. And then there was something about this came off. He's going to need another visit with some laughing gas. I signed him up for swimming lessons. My mom's foot is still healing. My dad's still working a lot. I am in a bad situation. And my dysautonomia is progressing. And I have no one who can immediately help me. Healthcare reform, anyone? Anyone? Does, is, is anyone listening? Does anyone give a crap, a care? Is there any compassion? Any compassion or not even compassion? Is there any continuity? Because all of my specialists, they're great. All their assistants are great. The nurses, there's no continuity. You tell me one thing and then you push me off. Who's coordinating? And then when I had, was really going to actively going to my primary care, I used to see her like once to twice a week. She, I, I think I drove her nuts, but I need, you know, you're supposed to coordinate. You send me to a quack doctor neurologist the first time. And, and then when I finally get a dysautonomia specialist, you're like, well, what's that? I mean, so I have dysautonomia. My body's slowly breaking down. And you go, so now you've got a specialist, so what does that do? Well, you know, it's not doing anything because I'm not being sent to, to, to any good ones as far as dysautonomia is concerned. And the one that is good in Boston, she's not a talker. She's got all this information in her head, but she can't say it to me so that I can utilize it. And if she's a neurologist, why didn't she ever follow up on my um, gastroparesis? And why is it that my GI uh, was upset? He's like, I keep trying to contact her, I send her an email, I called her because I need some of your records from her so we can figure out what's going on here. And there's a specific test I need for her to run. I'm like, well, my hematologist can't run that test. He's like, no, your hematologist won't know how to read it like a neurologist who specializes in dysautonomia will. So where am I? Stuck in my room. These walls I have to keep bare because I am overstimulated by everything. So there's nothing in here. Just the door's closed. Just a simple room. Gotta pull those. The shades are open so that you guys can see me because I'm tired of talking to you in the dark. But I have to close those. I'm miserable. Can't poop. Can't. The heart is just stopping. Then starting again. Then the ER notes are like, if you experience any more of these symptoms, please come back for what? You have not helped me, and especially you, Dr. Jeffrey Kluger, cardiologist, spot specialist, affiliated with Hartford Hospital, 85 Seymour Avenue, Hartford, Connecticut, and also located in Blue, Blue Back Square in West Hartford. No help cometh. My help cometh from the Lord always and that's my reminder here that's where it's always come from because people are just people doctor or not people are just people you better have some faith in something if it ain't god you better be praying to a rock you're gonna need something to sustain you well, i'll be back and don't know when because I've just had enough even talking about it. I'll be back. Dr. Jeffrey Cooper.